Hi friends, if you can't tell from what I'm wearing, I just was reacting to episode 4 of PBK Euphonium or Sound Euphonium. I actually did try to look for my Letterman's letter from Marching Man that has like all my pins in it from the different things I uh, was participating in. I can't seem to find it. It's, uh, I looked on top there. It's probably in something, um, but I couldn't find it. All I got was a bunch of dust in my eyes, not my nose. <laughs> so yeah, that's fun. Um, some announcements to make by now uh, this episode. This episode should hopefully be on time, but the last episode was late, unfortunately. It is what it is. But the biggest thing is obviously by now you maybe figured out, oh, I've monetized. I've already monetized my channel, but I have monetized in the sense that I've added another ad on my anime reactions right after the first part of the reaction and in the beginning of the commercial break. I just need to add some more opportunities to make some money. You, which usually comes to a total of like 18 more cents. But just because um, some things are happening in my personal life, not to me, but to people I love. And right now we've reached the point where we're not dealing with too much money issues because certain things that need to happen that would eventually cause a financial strain haven't happened yet, which is great. Uh, but also those things also need to happen. Uh, the things that we need to happen that will have a financial strain because of just various other things. Fun stuff. Anyway, the point is, I'm trying to figure out more ways to uh, make pocket change uh, money. I'm back at work, but I thought, well, here's a step here. I'm also trying to be smart about my budget. And thankfully, the summer being in New York, which I absolutely loved, it kind of, I've already started becoming a bit smart with my money, but even more so trying to be more strict with myself in terms of like how much to buy, what to buy, what, you know, to eat out. I've gotten better at saying no to eating out. I'm like, oh, we have food at home. Oh, I can just make this and this and this. So I've gotten better at that, but there's still more to come. There's still a little bit more about budgeting. Uh, unfortunately, it's kind of learning, a huge learning curve for me. The point is trying to figure out ways to sort of, you know, lighten the load um, for some of my family members, kind of taking on some more fi financial stuff. Which also leads me to saying that I've been saying for a little while now, if you follow the channel, that, oh, I'll get a Patreon when I get to 10,000 subscribers. And the main reason of that is, first, I'll have 10,000 subscribers, but also I figured by that I'd be able to figure out, you know, how to um, promote the channel better, maybe I'll have a better idea of what kind of channel I want. At the same time, it also is my way of going, well, hey, I want to apply to grad school and... And yes, in January of this year, 2022, uh, or next year, I guess. So if I get in, it's going to be super busy. I'm not going to have much, as much time to actually, you know, do reaction stuff. But because of certain things, I'm going, you know what? No, I'm going to start earlier. And I was thinking about that this summer. I was like, oh, maybe I'll actually do it when I get to 7,500 subscribers. But then I realized, no, no, no. Sooner the better. So my hope is um, that in November... I would actually, I don't want to just quit my job. That would, I don't want to leave them hanging. They've really taken care of me very well. So uh, I respect them too much to just, you know, get out of here. I also don't, full, full offense, I'm not that trustful about how many patrons I can get. So the thing is that I, starting in November, would like to start a Patreon and kind of weed, not weed, lean, no, wean <laughs> my way out of work. Uh, work, we're super busy in October and, and uh, September, usually around the winter months, it kind of pulls back a little bit. So uh, in November, I would want to look on creating a Patreon then, because by then I, I would have an idea of what kind of business model I would want to have. Also, I would love to, maybe not immediately, but eventually actually get merchandise. That'd be really fun and figure out, you know, what that's going to look like, who to go to for as a company. And I already have a couple of companies in mind because uh, they're reputable and other people use them, uh, YouTubers and otherwise. So it'd be cool to, uh, to do that. But those are baby steps right now, bit by bit, day by day, week by week. Things have to be, you know, thought about. And, uh, but that's the kind of the ideas I really would actually like to do subscribers. And I think the more anime that I'm doing, the more consistent I am in terms of trying to, you know, make my thumbnails look better, make my video quality look better. Sound quality is fine, but video quality specifically look better as well as being more consistent in terms of posting. 
which is still a learning curve right now, <laughs> that my hope is the channel just grows a little bit faster, a little bit faster. Not skyrocketing, clearly, but definitely a little bit more on acceleration. So my hope is then usually by the time I reach 6,000 subscribers, which hopefully will be more sooner than later, then I'll be ready to go. It's still, I'm still a very, very tiny channel, but I would, um, yeah, but I, I also kind of want to be able to be frank of like, hey, this is where it is, you know, yeah. But like I said, day by day, week by week, who knows, it might change. Anyway, and this anime rocks. I love it. I actually like talking about an anime that I know things about, not necessarily anime, but being in Marching Man for six years. Uh, four years in high school, two years at university. I was drum major my last two years at in high school. I uh, earned it my junior year, and then I inherited it. Uh, we grandfa we grandfather our roles into becoming a senior drum major. I understand about the frustrations of leadership. I understand about having a band that is filled with people who don't care, people who do. I understand what's like, you know, having a, well, actually I really like Taki Sensei, our band director. He did, he really cared, but he also had a temper and some other problems that apparently he's always been like that. And so uh, he's not the example of what I would call a, a great person in terms of, you know, his self-control of his temper and, well, self-control of his eating habit too, just to be a little mean there. But, um, he did care, and so it can be very frustrating, and it, it, basically, it, I don't know, it's interesting, but I like this anime a lot. I'm very excited for the Sunfest, because I know they sound really solid, um, they're not mind-bending or mind-blowing, but they sound solid, and for them, it's a huge step, and they will definitely surprise people at the marching competition. I'm very excited for them. Anything else to add? Reina and Kumiko's relationship is weird. Kumiko acts like a girl who has a major crush. Like, she does. She is hyper aware of Reina's presence. She really hangs on Reina's opinion of her. Um, she hates to embarrass herself or even speak her mind, show her personality in front of her. So she's really tense. And at first it came across as, you know, she didn't mean to, like, she felt like she insulted her uh, at the end of their last year in middle school. So it came across like that. But then it, the more she was reacting, I was just like, that's not quite how she's acting. Uh, and it's funny because we pair that with her treatment of Shuichi, um, Tsukamoto. She doesn't like him at all. She treats him really badly. She, she's terse with him. She's short with him. She doesn't like spending time with him. She's so blissfully unaware of his presence. And when she is aware of his presence, sorry, my hair. When she is aware of his presence, she's not happy. Um, but they clearly know each other for a very, very long time. And they are comfortable to some degree talking to each other. And they're neighbors. And again, it came across as she blames him for embarrassing her, her last year in middle school. But I think this is more deep-seated issue there. I don't know. I am very excited because by now, I think the announcement was made that Kyo Annie is working or going to be working on the season three soon for this anime, which I guess will, will officially bring this series to a close. Because I know there's two seasons, a couple, two or three movies, I think, maybe just two. Um, one of that has completely different animation style than, which is Liz and the Bluebird, which I'm very excited for. That's why I keep seeing the oboe bluebird bluebird. So I know who some of the characters are because you get to see the references enough. Um, but I'm excited to kind of dive into their stories. But I know that really won't happen until later on in the series, probably season two and on. And we get to touch on these characters, these relationship dynamics. Because this season we are focusing on our four main girls. Um, I was say Opal. <laughs> Not Opal, it's Sapphire. Hazuki? I, I screw up her name so badly. Kumiko and Reina. Reina for a while has been the mysterious girl, kind of, that has been kind of the ghost haunting Kumiko. But that, I'm sure eventually they'll actually start interacting, actually getting to know each other's people. And not just knowing things about them. Um, I also really, I love, uh, well, Taki Sensei's very nice as well, but I love, uh, Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on everyone's names. The sex leader for the base section. She is hilarious. It's also clear that she's also in leadership of the band, so she might be one of the band 
like ensemble leaders, not just a section leader, but she seems to be a person who's kind of like, relax, I got it, we're good, we're chill. She's very, her answer in a section leader meeting was very non-committal. So she probably, as cool as she is, she might be somebody who doesn't like causing waves. And that might be how she is in general, or it might be her reaction to the previous year for oh, the, the redhead. I, it was really sweet that her that Kumiko's fear streak that she experienced with Reina bled over to her saying, would you, could, would you like to play with us, you know? And she goes, sure. And so I thought that was really, really sweet of her to do that. And kind of that inspiration of let's, um, let's all play together. And the group clearly does practice at home to some degree. Even if she doesn't practice as much in the ensemble because she, they were all together, all of them, and they sounded great. So she does care to some degree, which it comes across that she doesn't. I think she's also one of the characters that we start leaning into in season season two. So I'm excited about that. Uh, but I do love focusing on our four main girls. This animation is beautiful. I love how one moment we get like lens flare when Kumiko ran around with from um, ran in the animated lens flare on the camera. But they also are just playful enough that when Kumiko realized what she had done, usually you know you go pale or you go red. But it's the idea would be the, that the color would drain from your face because she's like probably turned pale. But I loved how the deet and they played enough of the animation that the details drained from her face, starting from her eyes and her face. Like the whole, I thought that was so hilarious. I was like, that was a funny animated animation way of showing a person's color draining from their face. I thought it was very clever. I really, really like it. But uh, Kyo Annie is like the boss of bosses. Like they're so good. And there's, there are other amazing studios out there who do amazing work. But there's a reason people are like, Kyo Annie is, Annie is like. And it is weird to think about that the fact that it's only been a couple years, I think, since the fire, since the arson attack. Um, it feels like so much longer, but this past year has been the longest year of anyone's lives, at least in, in the States anyway. So, um, yeah. Anyway, without further ado, let's dive in before we do that. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, uh, there is no sound, partial image, keeps the copyright monsters mostly at bay. There's a countdown timer if you want to follow along on YouTube. Don't forget there's an ad right at the beginning of the midpoint review. There also are timestamps for the reviews if you just want to skip me kind of talking to no sound, um, to no sound episode, and you want to just dive into what I actually have to say about the episode, if not, but if you want to, you can follow along, of course. This intro is over 13 minutes. Probably still will be after I edit it. Countdown timer, you can't miss it. There's a trip version below. Link, you can click it. It's free, but if you can't get access to it because of what country you're in, again, you can follow along. There's a countdown timer. You can't miss it. I think I've said that three times now. Let's actually dive in. Mm. Yeah, Reina is totally on the def Taki Sensei Defense Squad. Mm. So she really respects him. It is very fitting that this intro has tons of horns in it. So that's you, Fukun, right? Plan to let me know. Are those little things real? Like, can I get one? I kind of want one. I'd rather get you, Fukun, even though I never played a Euphonium because, uh, first of all, it's cute. Second of all, I saw the picture of Saxacoon. That's terrifying. I hate that face. Why would you put that face on a saxophone, okay? Ooh, drama. What the? You know. Like. I always do enjoy that Kyo, when Kyo animate, Annie does choose to animate 
um, light novels. I'm sure other studios do too, because with the light novels, there is no drawings to work off of. So they get to be, they get to show off like the Kyo Annie style versus using the manga style um, and their little flares on it. But I like the Kyo Annie style. Mm -hmm. Oh, physical day, which is not a thing in the States. Wow. How's the key? How's the key? I'm gonna get that down. Oh, yeah. And she's been practicing. Yeah, for sure. Same thing with bass sax, too. Or baritone sax. <laughs> Relax, you got a couple more years. What are you doing? Oh my gosh, she gets so caught up in her head. Asuka, Asuka. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be one of those episodes. I'm so here for it. <laughs> One of the most stupidest things I ever saw was my freshman year, the stupid color guard captain put the only boy in color guard in a female uniform. He looked asinine. He looked so stupid. When he became the color guard captain after that, he changed that. Putting a boy in a girl's costume, how stupid. Whoa. Oh, they're so focused on the skirt size. I've never seen, um, March Japan, usually you're always wearing those big slacks. But they're not doing real marching, they're just doing simple marching across on the street. Wow. That was really nice. Maybe I can't. Alright, honey, calm down. She's so tiny. She is hecka pretty. What is this? I only saw one person march with a skirt. And she did it for religious reasons. She had this really long black skirt. Very simple. She didn't wear the pants. Um, she just wore a really long black skirt. <laughs> mm. Yep. It's going to start there. Hmm. Yeah, for sure. This can be very distracting and it can screw you up too in terms of <laughs> Yeah. And you even practice, you know ba 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 Head up, don't block your airway. It was always funny though when I would see yeah. Now some bands start mainly it's like left foot one, two, three, four. Some bands reversed it with one, two, three, four. Mm. 
It, the, marching is awful. And they're also on a dust field. That can't be fun. Was that Raina that walked by? She is cute, but she's also nice. I haven't done any like color guard stuff in a long time. <laughs> What's 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 mystery? What? <laughs> oh, was that like the color guard steps? Oh, yay! That's why I like her so much. She's a drum major, like I was. Oh, yeah, I love- oh, she's better than I ever was. I did try practicing and spinning at the same time. It's really hard. I should have practiced it way more. Look at that. That's really cool. I have some funny stories about doing the salute with that. <laughs> yeah, but she's- It's true. That's good, though, right? Hmm. I'll have to tell you, I had to remember a midpoint reveal. I'll have to tell you a funny story when I, um, got cracked across the nose by a pole. Great. Fantastic. What are they blowing into? Ooh, look at Raina, it's working real hard. Dust feels probably not very fun. You're probably gro dirty and gross. Also, what uh, sucks? Next week's performance. Not much time, but there's still time. So the other woman must be the teacher advisor. They volunteered. Nice. They stayed. They all stayed. That is a sign of change. Oh, she's leaving. She would be the one person to leave. Oh, well, she says she has cram school. But does she? Oh, she, some people actually don't have good rhythm and beats. She'll learn it. It's hard, but she'll learn it. Also, I can tell you as a drum major, it is very hard to march backwards. Because you're always kind of um on your toes the whole time because you're sliding your feet backwards. That's how you march backwards. You have to slide your feet. Safety thing. Still do that too when I have to walk backwards. Yep, shoes come off. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's really important. She never sounds relaxed. I like she just can't keep her voice from going up high.
her voice. She's so stiff. Relax, you goober. Baby girl, calm down. With the lighting in the hair. What was that? You made her laugh, honey. <laughs> oh, tenor sax. Oh, look at the unkempt boy over there. He's so cute. But I like how also the saxophones, like, they all look slightly different from each other. Um... There's this really great book. I've got to find it, but it was, I think he lost it. The Batman Bed Director had it. I'll have to see if I can find it. But it was different parts of the marching band, the band, uh, represented by birds. And it was great. I've got to see if I, if I can find it, I'm going to order it because the book was hilarious. And also in terms of personalities, it goes spot on. Like, oh my gosh. It was great. What was that? Like, you know, the hot girl hot guy like hair thing with the lights what the frick you Annie? what is that I, I it is cool to see kind of like they have they've changed he's first via spike but then being inspired being willing to like can we can we stay you know i think we should take advantage of this let's stay longer let's work harder let's sacrifice more of our time and that willingness like, the only person who, who, from what I gathered, left is our tenor saxophonist in the middle there. And uh, she also was the only person that voted to play for fun and not. So it kind of, it kind of totally makes sense. So it makes me wonder, is she going to stay in the band or is she going to choose to leave? Because it's her senior year and this is not how she wanted to spend her senior year. Now, she's... Has cram school, she said, which has to do with university, but so do all the other seniors, probably. So, I suspect it wasn't that. And maybe it was that, but she just used that as an excuse. Um, anything else to add? No, those moments with Raina and her were funny. Okay, Kumiko, calm yourself. Again, she acts like a girl with a crush. Her voice gets high when she's around it. Um, she doesn't know how to speak, or she doesn't really remember how, like, how to know how to move. And, um... Yeah, she loses her gosh darn mind. Yeah, it's funny how we react the same way whether we have a crush or it's a celebrity. If it's someone we greatly admire to some degree, um, we just lose our brains and we forget how to uh, interact. Also, I just saw something. My mom got this for me. I do have um, a pin that has the clarinet on it. or the I think it, my mom got it because she thought it was a soprano sax. It was clarinet, really. Um, but I had this little magnet an alto saxophone so i'm going to oh the music stand is not uh magnetic the bottom of the music stand is but the actual this part of the stand is not hmm fascinating hey all right i'm gonna put my little saxophone maybe not there right there there we go i'm not gonna move it again right there i'm gonna put my little saxophone right there Oh, uh, so she is. She's very pretty. Uh, she has a great personality. She's clearly practices because she's doing a really good job with the baton. Um, oh, not quite a baton. There's another word for it. Shoot. So I, I, I really try my senior year to get really good at it. And uh, I got to a certain point, but I should have practiced more. In my head, I was like, I wanted to practice more. But I'll tell you my two funny stories. My one funny story about... Um, that is that I got really nervous one time and we do our salute and part of our salute is first of all we're on the stand which is not much room to kind of move but also part of it has a toss in it I think it's a triple I don't know what happened this marching band but uh this was during a time where our senior drum major when I was a junior so I was a junior our senior drum major some things were going on. I don't know what was going on. I really don't, but I had to conduct the whole time. But 
it's weird sometimes how your brain works. This happened another time too when my bike fell out from under me. This moment happened, I toss it, then I don't remember a single, and then I, my mind goes blank, it like went white. I don't remember at all what happened. And the next thing I see is my, I blink and my baton, there's another word for it, is flying sideways, boom, over there. Totally jacked up. I don't know what happened, but literally, Toss it, mine goes blank, white, neck, I blink, baton, it's flying in that direction. I literally don't remember what happened. I kid you not. Then I, I screwed it up when they did my salute, whatever. Um, it only happened one other time I was riding my bike. I was approaching a corner. One moment I'm approaching the corner, the next I blink. I don't remember a single thing, and the bike is sliding out from under me, and I hit my throat on the handlebar. Clearly, I'm fine. But I don't know, my br my brain just went white. I don't know what happened there. But that's what happened. And it's actually kind of funny. That story devolved to the point that when I, my freshman year at UD, my freshman year at university, some marching band people were there, some underclassmen who were underclassmen when I was there, told the story that apparently it was like this awesome thing where I went like this and it like flew in the air and then it stuck into the ground. Did not happen that way. I really appreciated that it became that amongst uh, pe people in high school. That's not what happened at all. I literally, like, I guess it must have hit my hands. I don't really remember, but it, again, mine went white. It, it flew sideways and just went thunk on the ground. It was just really funny, but I was really embarrassed. But I was trying to practice it more so I could also, when I marched and I wasn't conducting, I had it behind me. Now, when we conducted, we didn't have it in our hands. Grandparents would come and grab it, and then we would conduct our, by our hands. But, uh, yeah, holding your arms the whole time and marching backwards, really hard to do. Um, anything else to add? No, that's it. Um, let's keep going. I'll tell you the story about the flag in my nose at the end. After I hear the band kick butt at the Sunfest, tell you what. A little bit of that 3D work there. Today's the day. Yeah, she probably has to get up really early on a weekend and get to band. Yeah. Yeah. A little different when you're doing evening concert. Oh yeah, those are the marching tubas. They wrap around you. Our guys didn't have that when they played. They had to put it up on their shoulder. They didn't have the wraparound tubas. We did have some, but they weren't in great condition. We never used them. That or we never had enough. Big old strong boy picking it up for ya. Oh no! She's late, but she's gonna be there in time. Cool. Yeah, look at them, they're cute. Hmm. Our funds usually for most band schools in the States. Oh, visiting alumni, it's so sweet. It depends on the school. That's really cool. That's true. Yeah, definitely mixed messages. Thanks. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, look at their itty bitty shake out. Oh, they're so cute. So she's the staff advisor. <gasps> hmm. Interesting how you didn't travel with them.
Makusha? Oh, is that a really good... Oh, they're, they're that school. Nice. <laughs> like the Blue Devils. <laughs> They're cute. Oh no, the crab school's in the middle. Oh, relax. Oh, it's really cool. So she really went because she wanted to play in the band. I guess they did kind of have an odd relationship. She even mentioned Corsica. <laughs> oh my gosh, this girl. Big gossip. That tends to happen sometime. Oh, now she's an overwhelming girl who probably got, who pulled her into her orbit. Nope, that's her band. <laughs> yeah, she did, but it's only just beginning. Oh, this is cute. I like that. That's super duper cute. I really like that. I like when her eyes are all gold and happy. Oh, look at that. Oh, anyway, I think I forgot to mention that usually for at least a lot of schools in the States, the band parents, especially the band moms, tend to be really um, involved in keeping the money sensible because the band directors are useless with it. So usually in the high schools, I kind of like how in the Japanese high schools, there's a, diff there's a difference for the most part between the girl high school, like the girls' costumes and the boys' costumes. Whereas... Um, but usually the boys' cost the boys' uniforms I'm seeing, for the most part, for the boys, um, everybody was wearing the, uh, it's pretty unisex in the costumes. It's only really in the color guard that there's a difference. Oh no, they're spiraling. But um but um Oh I forget any of that song. Reset.
she shocked him. She knew what was happening. She shocked him out of it. Good girl. It's for the audience. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes! I like how they have, like, the trumpet, like, the moment she's there, but there's moments she was, like, down like this. It happens a lot with the trumpets. Like, depending on what they put the most pressure on for their, for their lips. That's really cute. They look so good. Yep. Breathing in. Oh, they animate their faces, their embouchure movements. Oh, yay! They got the marching um, xylophones. I love that. She is pretty. No, apparently they were the suckiest school ever in the whole area. <sighs> Mm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Is> that Tupacu? <laughs> How's it key? How's it key? Okay, the name's Simon. Look at her. Oh, what a great way to end this episode. I absolutely, but now I want to actually look something up. Sorry, so my coloring is going to probably change a little bit. Give me a second. Oh my gosh. I can't really see anything. I want to look up a comment. Uh, oh, I'm going to have to. Okay. Ah! Ah! I'm all over the place. I can't see things because of how I have it on the screen. I know, my thing's all like over the place. Okay. Okay. Ah! Okay. I'm not paying attention at all. There we go. Okay, not on that video. Where is it? I know I'm not listening. I will, I promise. I just want to see a particular comment. All right, well, okay. We oh, no, 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 don't move forward. So, surprise! I'm gonna react to one more thing, not the whole thing. But someone had mentioned the Kyoto Tachibana High School. Green band. Um, and I thought, well, let me react to an actual Kyoto band. Now, this is from a 2018 Pasadena band fest. So they're clearly so... And they actually... And they performed the Rose Parade. Oh, my gosh. They were... They came to the States and, like, performed in all these amazing parades. In, um... That's so cool. In, um... In the States, they are clearly a very good band. Also, I'm looking at a picture of them right now. There are so many girls. You guys are right. The girls are like outnumber the boys like crazy. Um, and I'm guessing that's the band director in that funky little, um, looks like a uniform, that black uniform down the bottom. Usually the band directors don't wear uniforms. They wear like their school uniform. Like they wear like a band shirt and nice pants, but they won't actually have a uniform uniform. But I wanted to... I'm going to react to a little bit because it's like a 15 minute probably performance. I'm not reacting to the whole thing. I'm going to react to maybe the first movement and kind of go from there. So we have the drum major saying, so she, again, she has a little bit of difference. She has a little bit of a cape and some other stuff to kind of set her apart. Oh. 
Nice. Unsurprisingly, two of the b marching bands are in two. Oh my gosh, there's like barely any guys. About the high school, about the size of. About the size of like a normal high school marching band. Nice. Ah, dancing. That sounds like just the brass playing there. Let's see. Oh, the pit's behind them. I'm gonna pause real quick. So it's different in the high school marching band in uh, in the states anyway. For in in the states because you can't really hear the pit very well. They're mic like crazy. There's always gonna be mics up front that the the people who are holding the competitions put up there. They might have personal mics. And the the first of all, the percussion is with the marching band marching with them. And second of all, the heavy instruments like xylophones, um I to say mandarins, no. Uh I'm looking on what it's called. It's like a giant xylophone, but it's not called a xylophone. Um but all those kind of playing instruments, as well as the timpanis and their stuff, they're actually in front of the percussion, uh, front of the marching band, the mar the woodwinds. Um, oh, fascinating. They're actually marching French horns, which is funny because they're playing it, like, sideways, and the horn sounds coming sideways. So usually in a marching band, if, if someone played a French horn in concert band, they played... They play the mellophone, which is pretty much the same key, same different fingering. Um, but that's what they would play instead for marching band and um, perf uh, marching performances because it allow the sound to go out towards the audience. Um, but the band fest isn't a competition, probably. It's just kind of a showcase. But it's fascinating to see them playing French horns out there. I also noticed, so I can see their um, baritone saxes are sideways because you have to, they're heavy. But also, and this is a stylistic choice, that their altos are also, and tenors are also slightly tilted. Usually in the States, now, if you want it straight or slightly tilted, that's completely fine, but they have to all be the same. So usually my experience is with the tenors and with the altos, it's straight up and down. Um, which is a little bit easier with altos, with tenors can be exhausting. Um, baritones, you, it's hard to, it's first of all, really hard to march when you've got a long instrument right by your legs. Um, most baritone, and I kind of see this from across the board, with the exception of some trumpets, most bar heavier instruments look like they're played by the guys. Ooh, ooh, sorry, sound might be a little behind, that was kind of lagging there. That's really cool, I like their, um... Actually, I would argue they're kind of on the, not, they're not huge, but they're on the kind of bigger side of most, some of the high school bands. Ooh, celloist! Oh, alto! Oh, I can barely hear her. It was nice, but I can barely hear her. Hey, trumpet player. You'll hear this. get pretty low. Oh! It's a trombonist! Okay, first of all, their move movements are super cute. Also, I'm hearing them play. They sound like typical high schoolers. It's good to know, even in Japan, they sound like typical high school players. Very few people can achieve Reina's level. It's funny, you can see her, like, moving, like, it's tapping and in marching band a lot of times they talk about like don't showing your feet tapping because it can be distracting so usually I learned when I would play to tap inside of my shoe instead 
uh, when I wasn't marching. Uh, actually, my freshman year, I had a solo. It was actually really, really cool. We were doing... Um, uh, we were doing Stevie Wonder, and I had a solo. I, I, I my solo was in "Isn't She Lovely." I, my, I played the harmonica solo. Um, so this in the song "Isn't She Lovely," there's a harmonica that plays a solo in it. I played that. Um, really was a lot of fun. Really enjoyed it. And then I got to play in a mini ensemble when we did uh, the Beatles. I forget what song it was. We had that. Um, it was it was kind of funny. Uh, poor saxophonist couldn't hear her. Poor girl. Um, actually, it's interesting when I had a, a when I was a, had a solo. I um. I uh, I was mic'd like it was attached to me, and I had to make sure that it like via um, however radio I guess that it connected so that way they could hear me. Cause yeah. But unsurprisingly, even without the mics, you can usually hear brass instruments really well. They are kind of made to really project with kind of woodwinds a little harder. Oh, I like it's kind of chaotic and then they came together. Ooh, girl's late. I always sucks when your fly gets wrapped around your pole. You know it's funny, I was willing to watch the first song, I want to watch one more. Ooh, Woodwinds, yeah! I know that song. It's a small world after not well when you're Pasadena in Disney World or Disneyland, of course you had to play it's a small world after not all. Perfect. <laughs> oh, cause the toys go up and down like that. <laughs> it's really cute. Those are some nice runs there by the um, clarinets. Oh, they're Mickey. Oh, high stepping. Oh, that's amazing. That's perfect. Oh, their circles are so good. It is so hard to march like that. Oh, that's hard to play when you're hopping. <laughs> oh, drum kit in the back. Those are fun. Fun. Oh, gotta have like the triangles. Ooh, are they gonna cross? I'm short. I like didn't pause as much too. I'm still going. I know it's gonna be a long reaction. All right, that I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end it there. It's getting a lot. Oh, it looks like they're switching out um, performers or um, drum majors, maybe. Okay, so that was cute and a little bit of an extra treat. I want to check them out. I kind of feel really good. I was expecting something like super kind of crazy amazing. They're high schoolers. They sound like a high school band. They're really cute. I do appreciate that. You know, again, they are high schoolers. They're not going to sound like the Blue Devils or the Cavaliers or um, Sweden's, what is it, um, Secret Drum Line or something like that it's called. They're not going to sound like, I don't know, professionals or people who, you know, they're not going to sound like Reina. Reina, you know, she practices like crazy. She has lessons. So she would be somebody probably... Now, that would probably join a drum line, and she could too. Actually, a part of me wanted to really part, be really part of a drum line, but drum, not drum line, um, drum and bugle corps, that, the corps that are here, they're, they're kind of, it's funny, they're professional, sort of, but you actually have to pay to be a part of the program, so you don't get paid to be a part of it. At the same time, 
um, their drum and bugle corps. So if you play a woodwind, you can't be a part of it. I actually wanted to learn how to play my dad's cornet because I want to be a part of it, but I never did because I don't have time and I didn't have the money to go and join one. Um, but I don't really want to because that's kind of... You want to see some crazy, amazing performances? Check out the Blue Devils. Check out Cavalier. Check out Jersey Surf, I think they were called. There's one a little bit closer. Um, most of these bands are like West Coast bands, I think. Um, I don't know how many are actually East Coast. I'm not sure. Jersey Shore. Uh, Jersey Surf. Surf, I think it's called. It is an, obviously an East Coast one. Um, but it's kind of cute. They're like, yeah, you know, high schoolers. It's like a high schoolers. I mean, like high schoolers. They're high schoolers. Um... Oh, the alto, I couldn't even hear it. <laughs> she needed to be closer to the mic. But yeah, that's the problem with woodwinds. They don't have the projection capabilities of brass. It just, it is what it is. They are meant to be softer instruments. Oh, well. Um, that was cute, though. I really did appreciate that. Um, all right, real quick, before I go into the episode, I'll tell you. No, I'll do it at the end. I'll t I gotta remember to tell you a story of how I got whacked across the nose. Um... I love this episode. It I understand the stress of people, uh, you know, trying to... Uh, the band wasn't that great when I showed up. I apparently didn't have a great reputation in terms of being a strong contender for a uh, marching band. But all of us had this drive my freshman year to be better. We all liked each other. We all wanted to improve. So we were actually easy to teach. We all wanted to do really well. And we did do really well. But then we reached a point, and I think part of the reason we did well, because we kept surprising people of how well we did. But at the same time, what changed was that my sophomore year, we had a lot of people come in who wanted to be part of the band, but they didn't want to put the effort in. And I don't know what happened between class of 2011 and class of 2012, but the, the class of 2012 kind of sucked in a lot of ways. They were lazy in a lot of ways. They didn't want to listen to authority. They had a huge problem with authority. A lot of them did. I don't know what happened. And the band was split between people who wanted to work really hard and people who just didn't care. Now, they put the effort in when a fire was lit under their butt, but they had to be periodically lit with a fire in their butt all the time. And for some of us, we were like, just quit. Just quit. But for all these kids, their parents wouldn't let them quit, which was irritating <laughs> um just like just let them let them leave they don't want to be here let them leave they're dragging us down um if not playing wise they're dra definitely dragging us down personality wise and that was kind of an issue for a while the point that we weren't doing as well we were struggling it was more ben retro spent more time fighting with getting people to focus than the actual playing and um we actually went down a ranking we had to move to a different competition section because we didn't do very well after that um also sometimes your sections like performing it has to do with your size so if you're a marching band of 60 people you're not going to perform against you're not going to be in the same category and perform up against a marching band of 300 it's not that's not they're not going to do that um because they it's kind of like size and sound and, and area for uh performing um I, it was still a lot of fun, but it was a lot of stress to the point where sometimes looking back, I'm like, was it really worth it being a part of marching band? I could have left. I could have spent more time with friends. I could have focused on other things. I could have actually tried to join a sport. I could have done a bunch of other stuff. But for me, I guess it didn't occur to me to leave. I don't know if it was a weird loyalty thing or because I loved music so much, I just didn't leave. And I clearly liked it so much that I spent two years in college and I would have kept going, but there were scheduling conflicts. And in the end, it worked out well for me. I was in marching band for the time I needed to be. After that, I was busy with other things. I ended up switching majors and playing catch up with that. Um, I ended up being in leadership in the Christian organization I was a part of from uh, my last, yeah, three years. Uh, I was part of a different organization. It wasn't leadership though. But my last kind of two years um, at my university, because I was there for five years. I, first because I was in engineering and then because I switched majors. Um, but a lot of what happened to me, like, I love the difference in uniforms. I think it's super cute. Why can't we do that in the States? But yeah, we'd sort of make... 
I don't know why in the States, but the marching band uniform is unisex, more or less, except for color guard. It's not. It, there's there's a sex differentiation in color guard. Um, you're not going to put the girls in the same thing as the boys. Sometimes they're similarly, but they're cut different because they're more form-fitting. Versus in when it comes to the Shaco and when it comes to the other um, outfits, you uh, it's it's very it's unisex. It really is. Um, you can't really tell, you know, what's what. Let's look close at someone's face. Or when uh, for drum majors, when we took our shake go off, and you can tell, oh, it's a girl, oh, it's a boy. Um, but I really, I really did love marching band, but I feel like I just kind of lost my mind sometimes with it. And it can be a lot of fun playing. Um, and there's some satisfaction of doing a good job and working really hard. It's, um... It's a lot of fun, but it can be frustrating when you're dealing with a band where maybe a good ch chunk of them aren't paying attention, aren't working hard. It can be incredibly frustrating, and it's been fascinating. I've been in leadership positions in different kinds in high school, college, now, post-college, and it's always a little different. Some of the principles are the same. But it's fascinating that some of the things I learned in, in high school sort of become, oh, now I understand what was going on in college and past that. So it's funny, you can be in leadership positions since in high school, but it always morphs and changes depending on the environment. But it's, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I did like that. I did like that, though. Um, anything to say? No? Kumiko, <laughs> what is with you? What was that? The hair thing. Oh my gosh, all of that was just hilarious. Um, Kumiko needs to relax. I'm sure she'll reach a point the more she interacts with Reina, the more she'll relax. But clearly, Reina has been kind of in her... I mean, they went to the same high school band. But clearly, they had some sort of relationship, some sort of friendship of some kind at least maybe school only um in middle school i mean they were sitting next to each other in middle school waiting for the results and um even the other girls said like oh right rain is there so rain didn't mean something to kumiko uh, and, and it might be that she was just simply greatly inspired by her in middle school i think there's something else going on too um I do look forward to their relationship dynamic shifting, though, once Kumiko learns to relax around Reina. But I think that'll have come with her spending more time with Reina, which I have no doubt will happen more so based upon some gifts and things I've seen on social media. Um, anything else to say about the episode? No, I'm very proud of that high school. They're not even real. Well, high school might be real, but the band's not. Um, I'm very proud of them. It's really cool. They probably feel really good after that. But the horror works only just started because they've really just... It's kind of like now they've just gotten into the entrance exams. They've only just passed the first level. Now comes the real hard work of working towards nationals. And it can really... Now comes some of the breaking points. You know, they've come together as a group, but now this is where the the weak or the apathetic start to leave, because um, the real hard work comes. Once you start, you know, improving, it, the, the bar only gets higher and higher and higher. So how you can improve as a beginner, which I really like having Hazuki there because we get to see as a beginner what she needs to accomplish versus what somebody who is just starting uh, not soft starting somebody who is um, doesn't care and somebody who is working um, who maybe is Raina's level uh, so um, yeah and I'm sure Raina's I would say, I, don't say, I can't say perceived arrogance because I think she's a little arrogant probably when it comes specifically to the trumpet. So I think her confidence and a little bit of her arrogance is probably, especially, it's going to come by her in the butt. 
especially in the Japanese environment because you know an underclassman who is works super hard and who outdoes an upperclassman can even be taken the wrong way in the states and it's such a hierarchical and meritoc merit meritocal oh that's not a word um society as a japanese high school definitely she's going clearly she rubs the blonde girl the wrong way but she's definitely going to run the others the wrong way and i know for a fact that's going to come to not physical clashes but to a clash anything else to say about the episode no let me tell you the story about the the flag thing so um during so you would have a fall concert and a spring concert so there's concert band and the fall though we'd also have marching band so i was always busy with music all year round now in the spring i also did um the musicals i also did uh that as well and i don't know why i did it my freshman year I wanted to do that my freshman year i guess because even though i had stage fright when I was really young, I always wanted to be, like, have attention. And I have a YouTube channel. That makes sense now. Um, <laughs> so I always liked the idea of, of music and, I guess, being noticed. And I guess for me, the stage was it. Uh, I've also always liked musicals. I'm not a musical fiend, but I like musicals. So in the spring, I also did musicals. But during the winter, and part of that was the spring as well, I would also do Color Guard, Winter Guard. So I did that my freshman year. And when my soft no, not my freshman year. We didn't have it my freshman year. So I did it my sophomore year. We didn't do it our th- my junior year, I think. We did it our senior year, my senior year. So I did color guard. Maybe we did do it my freshman year. I can't remember. Definitely did it my senior year. But we definitely did color guard, uh winter guard. So I'm the senior drum major. I have experience with the flags and all that. I did rifle my senior year, so I understand that. And so we're doing our, not tryouts, but we're doing our try it out for Winter Guard to see if if this is what they want to do. And you could either do that or you did Winter Percussion. And that would have been fun, but you really didn't. Since Winter Guard and Winter Percussion practiced at the same time, you couldn't really do both. I I guess you could if you wanted to, but you really couldn't at the same time. So anyway, um, my senior year, we're doing the try it outs and people were doing their movements. And I guess, I don't know what they were doing, but I was, they were, we were spaced out enough that the people who, the leaders could walk between people and not get hit. I don't know if I, I, I definitely wasn't paying attention. I don't know if I was talking to somebody or looking at something else. Or she did a movement she wasn't supposed to. Like as in we were practicing a particular movement and she did a different one. I think... Based upon the fact that I'm 5'6", I guess she was doing one of, like, these movements. Because the flag, I, I I was looking to my left, and I came across the flag, went whack, right across my nose. Um, it hurt, for sure. Um, I've also been hit in the face with, uh, two different times, on the same side of my face, by a soccer ball. But that was in middle school and one was at university. Uh... But it was very funny because both times I was distracted. Anyway, I got hit in the nose. It hurt. So I'm sitting down. One of the student, not student, um, teachers, teaching assistants was there. And then one of the color guard girls sat next to me. I don't remember her last name. Her first name was Taylor. She was really cute, brunette. I tried to find her social media. Size, size point. Um, but the point is... I was sitting there and it hurt. It was throbbing, but I felt fine. I was like, I'll be, I'll be okay. I don't know what happened, if it was a pain thing or a nerve thing, but the pain got worse and worse and it reached the point I started crying and laughing. I literally went into hysterics. I don't know if it was an adrenaline thing or what, but I started, I couldn't stop laughing. I was like crying at the same time, but I started just laughing like crazy and I couldn't stop. So, maybe not as exciting as a story as uh, one could tell, but I did get, again, whacked across the nose. I have hit myself with the, I forget what's called, not the baton, the drum major had, what, what Asuka, Asuka, Asuka was playing. Oh, Asuka. Asuka, I think. All oh, these names. What she was using, I have hit myself with that. 
I have I hit myself in the back of the leg with the end of it. I've hit myself. Usually that's what happens the most in, in the calf with that. Um, one time, now we wore gloves when we did Winter Guard, but sometimes when you, like, it feels really good when you catch it just right, but you can also catch it really wrong, so I really hurt my hand. I never popped a blood vessel in my hand like some of the other color guard people did when they were using rifle. Uh, I got good at doing a triple. That was really good. I got good at that. Um, really liked doing the rifle. Never did saber. Saber's a whole other thing. Um... But yeah, I actually, I really enjoy Winter Guard for sure. Um, that's my story. That's it. <laughs> anyway, I really enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that little extra treat at the end, which is more editing for me, uh, of me re reacting and commenting on a performance of Kyoto Tachibana's high school. Uh, it was really cute. I really liked it. They're really good. I, I really appreciated it. And they, and they, are do, they do more traditional marching, but they also get really really creative um you don't really see that as much in uh, in in stateside it's very uh, it's all about the shapes and the movements and how clean the lines are um there was a lot of things you could probably pick at but i'm guessing this pasadena performance was more of a showcase and not a competition maybe it was a competition but they clearly work hard but at the same time they're clearly having a ton of fun you can see that that that's their focus, but they also work hard. It's really cool. Um, whereas in, in marching band, you're always so, like, you don't react unless you're supposed to. It's very military. Like, it's like, mm, 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 mm. Until, until you get to be chill and relaxed. Anyway, anything else to say? Nope. That's it. Um, thank you so much for watching this reaction. Really long reaction. Really long outro. Gosh, it's gonna be so long. Please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, share with your enemies. And as we get closer to 6,000 subscribers, as we get closer to November, uh, more will come out about the potential Patreon, potential what they'll look like. I have to see, I'm probably gonna see what Tiubu does for sure, in terms of like how he does his tiering and stuff like that, because this system clearly works. Um, uh, so that's really cool. So I do want to check him out and kind of see what he does because I think that would be a good place for me to start. But I do have plans and wishes I would like to do. But clearly, I'm going to be starting my Patreon sooner than expected, which is pretty cool. Uh, anything else to say? Nope, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this long but reaction. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, share with your enemies. I'll see you next time.